Hi, I'm Roger Helton with Super Patrol USA, based here at Ormond Beach Airport in Florida. Well, we're having a beautiful morning today here in uh, the month of September uh, in sunny Florida. And uh, Mike and I had the opportunity uh, about 45 minutes ago to go out for uh, about a 45 minute flight in the airplane where we got to demonstrate in flight uh, the, the slow flight characteristics, uh, the easy maneuvering and stall and recovery and recognition of an impending stall with the airplane, uh, how gentle it is, how forgiving the airplane is. Uh, and then uh, we headed for a lake, go play in the water. And um, I think that uh, Mike might have been surprised uh, and pleased uh, how easy it is to operate this airplane on the water. If anything, it's probably easier than operating at the airport. Uh, it's smooth on the water. Conditions were perfect today for being able to do so. Uh, the checklist is simple. Like, like any airplane, you always want to use a checklist to make sure that you've not forgotten something. And we looked at a video just a few moments ago um, of an, an inadvertent landing gear down water landing. And what was the tendency of the airplane? And I think that uh, everyone was surprised to see that there's nothing uh, <clears throat> surprising about it at all. The airplane just basically comes to a very quick stop, but there's no pitch down, nosing over, flipping tendency whatsoever in the airplane. The airplane is incredibly simple to operate. There's no uh, flaps, no flap control. There's no mixture control. It's a very simple set of throttles, one on either side of the cockpit area. The cockpit's 46 inches wide. Plenty of room for two fairly large sized people to be able to be comfortable while flying the airplane, uh, on even extended trips. The 912 IS engine actually only burns about four gallons an hour. Probably one of the most unique aspects of the airplane is how it was designed from the ground up. On the bottom of the airplane, there is uh, the carbon fiber, but we also have carbon Kevlar, and it's layered in sheets, and it protects the, in, the integrity, the structural design of the airplane itself. So if, for example, you were to make a landing at an airport on the hard surface runway, and the landing gear were up, uh, it causes cosmetic damage that can easily be repaired. The airplane does not have to return to a service center or a factory, just someone who's uh, qualified to be able to do uh, carbon fiber and body uh, repair like uh, uh, on a lot of the light sport airplanes, easy to accomplish. Uh, the other situation that is unique in the design of the airplane is how aft the main landing gear is. And uh, we've, we've had a few occasions where the airplanes actually landed on the water and the landing gear was still extended. And uh, in each occasion, uh, nothing unfavorable occurred other than an immediate quick stop, uh, short, what we call a short field landing, in this case, short water landing. And uh, uh, there's absolutely no damage to the landing gear whatsoever. I kind of keep the technique in my back pocket. If I would have to use it, I know I can. If you've got systems in an airplane that are electronically controlled, they can go bad. If you've got systems that are hydraulically, pneumatically com controlled, that can go bad. You can have leaks in the system and then it have a, a situation where you can't operate the landing gear. This is strictly a Johnson bar uh, with cables and then levers in the back for the main landing gear. Uh, it's a, almost a, a foolproof system that uh, as long as a cable doesn't break, and we've not had one break yet, uh, in the years that we produced the airplane, it, uh, it, there's not really much to go wrong. It's straightforward, simple, easy to operate, and easy to maintain. To give the airplane tremendous performance, either at the airport or on the water, we, we use the biplane design. The bottom wing is, is set at a little higher angle of attack than the upper wing. The flight controls, the ailerons, are in the upper wing itself. When we are uh, operating the airplane, uh, taking off either on the water uh, or at the, at the runway, ground effect is felt by this lower wing and it gives us the capability of getting either off the water or off the runway in a very short distance period. And uh, we look at numbers that are below 400 feet. Either one, whether you're at the airport or on the water, takeoff distance at maximum gross takeoff weight of 1320 is less than 400 feet with the airplane. Um, the upper wing uh, is designed so that it will not stall 
prior to the lower wing. The lower wing set at a high angle of attack. So as you and I were demonstrating the stall in the airplane, we slowed down and we were looking at speeds on the airspeed indicator as they approached 40 miles an hour. We were hearing uh, the stall warning indication. We were seeing on the angle of attack system on the PFD uh, and we could actually then begin feeling the buffeting occur and we felt the nose drop nice and gently. That was this lower wing basically beginning to stall. And the Dynan system that we've got now, the Garmin will do the same, uh, gave us full warning ahead of time that we were approaching an imminent stall with the airplane. But the entire time, the upper wing was still flying because it was set at a lower angle of attack and it was not even close to stalling. And the nice thing there is that the ailerons, the flight controls are in the upper wing. The total combination of the two wings, we've got more than 161 square feet of lifting area between the two wings. If that were all in one single wing, you'd probably be looking at something, currently we're at 30 feet, we'd probably be looking at 40 to 45 feet in wingspan of the airplane. And when you're trying to dock an airplane and or get an airplane up a ramp, having a narrow wingspan area is very, very uh, useful in that process. In the past, what we've offered for the airplane uh, to give flexibility to whatever the particular buyer was in need of, uh, whether it be range, whether it be power for higher altitude operations, or just the standard carbureted 912 ULS engine. This demo aircraft that we've been flying, the one sitting behind me, is powered by a 912 ULS 100 horsepower dual carbureted engine. And it, it, gets, it burns about uh, five gallons an hour as the average fuel burn at cruise with the airplane. Performance is identical in this aircraft as it is with the 912 IS fuel injected engine, which is the only available engine now for the aircraft. We're no longer offering the carbureted or the 914 UL turbocharged 115 horsepower engine. And uh, we've sold the airplanes in the past. The 914 is the second number, highest number of, of aircraft sold. And it, uh, the aircraft seems to go to Montana, Wyoming, Northern California, places where they're operating out of higher elevations, lake elevations of like 4,000 or 5,000 feet above sea level and the additional power gives them the performance that they need. It's not so much cruising at 14,000 feet, which is the ceiling for that engine, whereas the 912s, either one of them, the IS fuel injected or the carbureted, it's 12,000 feet. It's the fact that they can get to those altitudes quicker with the turbocharged engine. We try to keep our aircraft as simple as we can, even in the production phase of it. There's a, a major shift in the assembly line going between making a turbocharged airplane versus the fuel injected airplane. The new airplanes will all come with a Garmin G3X. The new airplanes will all be the 912 IS fuel injected engine. And we like to keep the option list at an absolute minimum. The only option available for the airplane is the color of the stripes on the side of the airplane. Every single thing else in this airplane standard equipment, from the Garmin G3X system to the 912 IS engine, uh, to all the other listed options that look like options that are standard equipment in the airplane at one price. We're asked, you know, well, what's the delivery, you know, by the time I get the airplane, like buying an automobile, I got dealer prep and set up and, you know, service this and that, whatever, all these extra charges. $189,000 is the price of the airplane. That's what you will pay. If you live in Florida, we do collect the state sales tax. If you live in other states, we do not. That is incumbent upon you as a buyer to work with your state for the state sales tax. But your price fixed is $189,000, all options included, which there really aren't any. The majority of the people that buy our airplanes uh, have, have all proven to be people with experience flying airplanes uh, we occasionally get someone that's interested that has no flying ability, experience, or anything in the past, but most people do. What we provide with the airplane is 10 hours of ground combination, air and ground training, ground school and flight training in the airplane. It's transition training. We really are not a flight school. What we want to do is transition someone who knows how to fly an airplane to our airplane and then if you've never done any work on the water, you don't have a seaplane rating, it's not a problem. We get the water endorsement then added to your certificate and uh, we basically take your license and we add water. It's a, 
It's fun to do. It's the first time in my whole career flying uh, that I've actually flown for fun. And uh, it's probably the most fun flying I've ever done. To find out more about us, including technical information, if you want to download and look at the actual pilot operating handbook, or you want to look at the maintenance manual for this airplane and see what the requirements are for maintaining the airplane or how to fix something in the airplane, go to our website. It's www.superpatrelusa.com. And or there's a phone number there, 855-557-7872. And you can call me and I'll be more than happy to talk with you and uh, answer your questions right over the phone. So I've just recently ordered my next two inventory airplanes. They'll be here in uh, the January, February uh, time frame, And there's no one's name on either one of these airplanes yet. So uh, be the first on your block to get your Super Patrol.